Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Okay, this is part two of a two-part video, and this is comparing the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro with the Creality CR6 SE. Now, I've just bought the Neptune, and I was going to put everything in one video. I've just uploaded the the full review of the Neptune, and it's it is a full review. It goes on an hour and a half because in that I've got the boxing, the assembly, I talk you through all the screens, I demonstrate a run out sensor in uh, an operation. Uh, it's the full thing on the, on the printer and I was going to add the comparisons with noise and print quality and things after that but realising it, it was an hour and a half, I've had to split it into two videos. So what this one is about is comparing the two, the two printers. So I'll be running through the futures of each one, comparing some prints and mainly comparing the noise output from them. Now, you've got to bear in mind, and, and I will emphasise it later on, it's not an out-of-the-box CR6 SE. The Neptune, which I've just bought, is tested absolutely bog-standard as you get it and is about the same noise level as you'll see as the CR6. But that's only because I have highly modified the CR6 with um, Noctua fans and printed parts and all sorts. As you get the CR6 SE out of the box, it is extremely noisy. If you check up here, or is it up here, whatever, um, there is a full review with before and after fitting the silence fans of, of totally silence in this AR6, so we we'll refer to that. But meanwhile, this is just uh, just comparing the two in other features as well. Now, I will put uh, links to the two printers underneath. There will be affiliated links. I'm still hoping to get the uh, affiliation from Elegoo them, themselves. Um, but by the time this video is up, hopefully I will. But if you click on them, it won't cost you any extra, but I will get a small commission. It's just pennies commission per sale off Amazon and, and hopefully from uh, Elegoo as well. So uh, like I said, links for them in the description below. So without further ado, now we'll get straight into uh, just a few side-by-side -side pictures and then we'll do a, a, a little video tour of them. Oh, okay. We'll start off with the uh, the pictures of them both side by side on the uh, the worktop there. CR6 SE on the right, the new Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro on the left. You can see they're both very similar size, similar position for the screen. Although the Elegoo is removable, um, all the yellow bits on the CR6 are bits I've printed, um, extra add-ons downloaded from. Uh, Thingiverse, and you can see the two different positions for mounting the spool. I'll show you them closer a bit later. And that's like a, a frontal top down view of the CR6. You can see all them yellow printed parts a bit uh, clearer there. And the, uh, the storage boxes at the front again, we'll show them in more detail uh, very shortly. So this picture shows a bit more clearly the position of the spool on. The CR6, it's side mounted and you can take the spool off and swing the arm in and out to uh, to transport it, but it's mounted on the side. So for me, that, uh, that suited my circumstances more because I had a shelf right above the machine that I've had to uh, move. As you can see there, where the uh, Elegoo is, that's where I have my printer, where the CR6 was and two holes were where a shelf was so i've had to relocate that shelf now so like i said for me personally i prefer the sideways mount spool but for a lot of people who are lacking in sideways room but not to uh, headroom the, the 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 top one will be better and there it is shelf uh, in its new position swung over to the left and that uh, gives clearance for the uh, spool holder sit a bit closer up on the this next shot there so uh actually i think it looks uh, quite good staggered over like that but uh, yeah like i say it'll suit some people out the side and some people on the top and that's the only uh, home i can think of for the uh, the cr6 there's just a few uh, ornaments on there but uh yeah the spool holder you can see in the best of places right in front of the observatory door but uh I'll have to make do it like that. We'll finish off these pictures with uh, this just to show you the slight difference in bed size. That's the Elegoo's 
magnetic bed on top and again that's it from another view you can see it's about 10 millimeters smaller all round even though the LEGU's got a, a larger height it can print a much higher object it uh, it's 10 mil shorter all the way around so a few pictures there with a, a an added uh, voiceover so uh, let's see now uh, in a bit more detail the difference between the two mainly the extruder and uh, the led light and things like that but we'll start off uh, with a video of the extruder so this is the extruder on the cr6 the run out sensor is here it goes through that that is fixed there to feed the cable through so if you wanted to manually feed it through you'd release tension like that put that lever there and then push the cable through like that and then put it back and then the extruder is in there it's not like the CR10 I had an exposed one where you can see the cogs and that it's in there some people have had trouble with this cracking in that I've never had trouble it's the original one I've never upgraded it and it's worked fine but it's just a single um, drive wheel if you will one sort of like I'll, I'll put a picture up on screen of a, a normal extruded and you can see what it's like okay so this is a picture of an upgrade to uh, a different Creality printer one like a, an ender 3 or a cr10 in fact i've just fitted one of these to me old cr10 my very first printer which i've now given to my grandson the uh, the standard ones are plastic and this upgrade is metal but you can see more clearly how they work on this one the driven wheel by the stepper motor is the brass one and that's uh, got a, the the brass cog is attached with them two tiny allen grub screws to the stepper motor as you can see and that's got ridges on it and it's them ridges them little v cuts in like the cog shape that grip the filament the white filament and drag it and push it along through the nozzle the hot nozzle and the uh, silver wheel you can see above it is like a, a bearing under tension and you pull the trigger towards you on the right side against that spring to release tension on that um that bearing sort of uh, wheel so as you can see it's only driven by the one on one side and it's that that grips the filament and pushes it along on the eligu there are there is a cog like that on both sides so it's like a dual drive direct drive which is supposed to be better for uh, the flexible materials like uh, tpu and then it's driven driven through this thing here called a bowden tube and that goes down to your hot end here and your nozzle that it squeezes through this thing here is just a part i got off wikipedia no wikipedia um thingiverse it's just a shield for the uh, a sound baffle still lets plenty of air through all these slots at the top from the back here and lets it to the fan but it does cut down the noise a bit if you check above now there's a little tag showing that um the difference in sound that stops on a previous video i did it's very minor but it, it does stop it a bit and all these yellow parts like i said they're just uh printed off thingy verse they're just decorative most of them it's just a, a cover for the screen just makes it look slightly better and these bits here these just go long strips that just drop in the grooves stop them up getting in there and like i said these are the good um, these are the bits I, that i haven't seen shown yet for the elegoo because this distance from here to here is a bit less it'd be a lot thinner draw but you can see you can keep all your stuff in there and in there and the uh whoops it comes with its own draw as standard anyway there again i printed that insert of thingiverse to keep all your tools in so uh, a lot more storage space so this shows it a bit clearer you can see the steel bed there the black uh, crinkly bit if you will uh, edge on and uh, the distance between that and the the surface below it the top of the uh, sort of power supply bit if you will 
is much more on the CR6 than it is on the Eligu. So you can get a much deeper draw in there. And because the printer has been out longer, there's more things available for it on Thingiverse. So that's that's why that uh, draw, there's plenty of room for that. And it's a reasonably deep draw that is of use. You can keep your Allen keys and, and things like that in it. But on the um, Eligu, you can see there's much less distance between it. Uh, you can see it a bit clearer there. But yeah, so... I suppose somebody with design skills, and my design skills are exactly zero, never got into actual design. It would be handy to have. That gap would still be useful. You could easily still keep a, a very thin drawer with some Allen keys in it and that. So maybe one one day when the, the printer's a bit older and it's been on the market a bit longer, somebody will develop some drawers that can, can fit in there. But uh, yeah, for now, it's all right. I can keep things elsewhere. Handy picture that as well, because you can see on the right the eccentric nut for the front uh, wheel. And that's what you do. You would adjust backwards and forwards, left and right, to uh, keep the bed from uh, rocking around. Keep it the proper tension against them wheels to keep it nice and smooth. Same tensioning knobs here and here for these two axis. Same drive belt linking tooth belt above that see that there um, so this is an extra when it comes it comes it comes with this glass plate on that is the reverse of it that is how the reality the reality comes it's a glass fixed plate this surface though does come off quite easily i find it's it's really susceptible to isopropyl alcohol i use 100 percent 99 isopropyl alcohol it has no effect whatsoever on the pei sheets but on this black non-stick stuff it does so i didn't like that surface at all so what i did i turned it round. i bought a magnetic build okay it's back in now it goes under these little clips at the back I just cut the magnetic pad around there and the same of these then you've got this magnetic pad that sticks to that and this is a surface I use all the time you can use a smooth surface if you like but as you, as you can see that fits great there so if you are upgrading a printer that is an upgrade I can definitely recommend that just clips on there like that Power supply from the side, same, but the right hand side, and you switch, and you've got your voltage changeover switch as well. Again, nice firm connection to the heated bed. The Eligu, just printed these. The difference with the Eligu is, before you saw on the CR10, the extruder was here, and it propelled filament down a tube to the head, so you've got all that tube to push it through before it even gets to the head so even though it's ptfe and it's really slick you can get a tiny bit of friction in there and that this is called a direct drive head the actual extruder is in this head so it drives it through to the hot end so you've still got a tiny bit of that uh, blue tube in it's not a solid metal hot end you've still got a, a tiny bit of that tube but much, much less. And they reckon it's better for handling uh, stuff like TPU, the flexible filament. I'll go into more detail of that in, in a second. Okay, so this diagram shows a bit a dual gear driver a bit closer. I didn't want to take the cover off the, the Eligu, having only just got it, and it didn't look that easy to do, to take pictures. So uh, I just put this picture online of a dual gear extruder. As you can see, there are two... As the name suggests, dual gear, there are two gears that drive that along. The one in the middle is the, the, what the motor drives, and then the, the two top and bottom, the, the steel bits, are what grip the filament. So there's two wheels driving it along instead of just one. So it doesn't show the filament there, but it'll it'll run past them and, uh, I dare say, be tensioned in some sort of way with something else. But... Uh, as you can see, two gears gripping it and pushing it along. So again, that comes as standard on the Eligu. On the Eligu, you pull against a spring there to 
manually push that through and you've got um, this gear wheel at the front gives you a visual indication that it is being motored through so that's that we've got the same I printed these last night or yesterday they've had overnight for the bed to cool down so if I push that now it should be yeah come off pretty easy not quite as easy as the white ones on the video in part one but of course they were much less in contact with the bed but you can see they are coming off and the, the two stubborn ones that are left them two you just flex the bed and they're off so great flex but that comes as standard on the elegoo it's not an extra so uh, yeah dare say people will be making covered colored covers on thingiverse for this and that in time but uh, at the moment i can't find any it seems a neater more compact design but there's uh, there's no storage drawers whatsoever on the elegoo and of course like i said the, the spool is mounted there vertically not horizontally as it is there and finally the uh, pièce de résistance up here got some really bright LEDs you'll see them closer on the unboxing but some like 24 I think LEDs in there that really light up whatever you're printing hard to see on the camera I'm going to turn the lights out so lights are out now as you can see and I'll just show you how bright it is you can see how bright the LED is you can easily see what you're printing on there fantastic feature and out again so yeah as you saw there fantastic feature is that LED really really bright I forgot to film the one on the CR6 but it's just a tiny little blue single LED right on the print head so it, it barely illuminates the object you can see it but uh, not as bright as that the good thing about that is if you've got a remote little camera like a tapo um, alexa control camera um, like i have that's brilliant you could leave the room in darkness and it'd, um, it'd easily pick it up even without its infrared uh, function on so uh, that's a good feature and uh, i said i'd mention what them gold coins were they were these don't worry i'm not trying to uh, forge british currency but uh, it's a token for a supermarket trolley so the white ones that you saw uh, i'll put a picture of them they were in part one i'd printed them on the cr6 to show you how easily they remove from a cold print bed um, these are they i'll put a picture of them on the print bed up there now you can see that's how they were on uh, the cr6 and if you look in part one you'll see how easily like i said they, they just come off you could blow blow them and it would move them and uh, they go in there like that just to hold your coin and see what i'm doing you've got to line it up with the slot properly like that and i carry one on my key ring there it is and it's been on for weeks and it's never come off i've given loads away to friends so it shows you you can print some uh, useful stuff on printers as well as the the ornaments and the reason a couple of them were uh, slightly stubborn i'm saying slightly stubborn they, they, a quick flex of the bed and you saw they came off was because the the surface area of that is a lot more than the surface area of that to stick it to the plate so uh, either of them both of them came off easy from that magnetic pei bed i've tried all sorts masking tape hairspray glue sticks um that previous creality black surface and the best i've tried of all is pei sheet so that's just my personal opinion but i think it's fantastic it's um it doesn't dissolve under isopropyl alcohol it, the magnetic sheets flex to my mind they are the best build surface you can get and like i say it comes as standard on the neptune it was about a 30 quid extra 
all the upgrades I made on the CR6. So we'll do the noise tests now. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it is sort of slightly unfair because the CR6 is heavily modified. Again, I'll put a link, I'll put a link at the end of this video for the, um, the silencing video I did on them. And there was a tab earlier on, but what it is, you can take the fans out of the CR6 SE, the, the power supply fan and the circuit board sort of area fan and replace them. One, you've got to put a book converter in to get it from 12 volts down to uh, 24 volts down to 12 volts. And you can put some very, very silent, high quality Noctua fans in because most of the fan noise on 90% of it for, for the Creality comes from the two fans underneath. Uh, not so much the hot end, although there is there is a bit of noise from there. Replace the underneath fans, it totally transforms. It goes from a really annoying machine that would drive you mad in the same room to I can hardly hear it. All you hear is, is some noise from the, the steppers, which are pretty quiet, but you still hear that noise. Um, so like I say, we're doing a, a, a comparison test now between that, which is highly modified, and the Neptune straight out of the box. The Neptune is really, really quiet slight bit more noise and i've now isolated i thought in part one it was from the the fan on the front of the print head the um, hot end fan but it's not it's from the uh, power supply fan i think it's got a slight whistle but it's still a much much better quality fan than the cr6 came with and i dare say somebody will be coming up with um an upgrade to that as well but at the moment i can easily live with it it's not annoying me like the cr6 was so let's get into them uh, noise tests now and i've set both up exactly the same so i did the recording with me boom microphone mounted on top of me uh, camera light here useful little uh, thing and that was level with the print head when i was doing the sort of like the to the human ear test if you like and then after that i put i took the camera off and put a proper db meter on there i think i've done a review on that as well if you want to look back somewhere for it um to take the db tests so uh, we'll show you them now and then we'll uh, do a couple of conclusions after that so the boom mic is on top of the camera and it is 30 inches away from the print head to make a, a level playing field with the other measurement and uh, this is a noise you'll hear very very shortly when I'm, I stop talking from the CR6 the modified silenced CR6 remember Okay, so we'll set up the DB meter now in exactly the same position and we'll see what the readings are for this. Okay, we're back on the radio mic again now and I've got the DB meter on the tripod. So I'll be quiet now and we'll see what the reading for the CR6 is. Okay, so you see it shoot up now to 70 because I started talking. About 43-ish, but when there's any jerky movements, the CR6 is a bit noisier at them. It's got quite a fan, hot-end fan, but uh, it does do more jerk move, uh, noise. So that was the sound test, uh, naked ear and dB meter on the CR6. Let's compare it now to the Neptune 3 Pro. So the boom mic is facing the printer now, on top of the camera, on top of the tripod. The mic itself is level with the print head. 
and uh, we're just going to hear how it sounds to the naked ear i've adjusted both the levels to uh, exactly the same on this one and the other printer so this is actually what the you sort of hear as you sat about 30 inches away from the the eligu and then we'll do the db test with the db meter in exactly the same position So uh, that's, I've tried to sort of simulate exactly what you hear. It's probably louder on this than the actual uh, human ear. It's, it's certainly not obtrusive while I'm watching TV. But uh, that slight whistle, I thought, I said on part one of this video that it was coming from the, the print head, the hot end fan. But it's not. It's more, that slight whistle is more from the fan at the very back of the machine, the power supply fan. So... Uh, I'll have to investigate that uh, that further and we'll talk about it later. So we've got the DB meter set up now. Exactly the same. Its height is just a, a bit lower than the microphone was, but it's in exactly the same height as it was just placed on top of the tripod when I measured on the CR6. 30 inches away. And uh, let's see what it's reading now. It'll be quiet and we'll see what the figures are. So pretty much constant 48 dB. You can see it altering around now because I am talking. But uh, yeah, 48 dB or so, pretty constantly. Because it's just a constant fan noise. You're not getting the, um, the same stepper motor noise as on the CR6. So uh, yeah, interesting. As you can hear on that, the... Eligu was a much steadier, the second one we did was a much steadier reading on the dB meter of like a constant 48 because that's the fan noise it's picking up more than the um, the stepper motors. They both got quiet stepper motor drives but uh, the Eligu to my mind is quieter than the CR6. The CR6 due to all my modifications is quieter fan wise. So we noticed on the CR6, the dB meter was scooting around from 44, which was the steady sort of noise, up to 51 when it did the eat, 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 eat jerks on the um, stepper motors. On the um, Eligu one, everything was as, as quiet. The fan was, was louder, if anything, than the stepper motors, so you were getting just a 48 thing. But either one is, is quiet. There is scope for making the Eligu even quieter by putting some fans on. But like I say, I can live with it as it is. So I may or may not do that. If in future an upgrade becomes available and somebody does one and that, I will do a full tutorial like I did on the CR6. But uh, I don't know whether I will or not because, like I say, I'm, I'm quite happy with it as it is. So, right, let's see how it uh, the t difference on prints. I printed off a um, Benchy. And if you don't know what a Benchy is, it's like a little tugboat. And the reason they call it a Benchy is because it's a benchmark print. There's quite a lot of benchmark prints, cubes, towers, things like that. But the Benchy is quite a good one because it's got a lot of features. It's got an overhang, it's got an arch, it's got holes in it, it's got curved surfaces, flat surfaces, angled surfaces. Uh, a tubular chimney so it's got quite a lot of the uh, the tricky things that, that will test a printer so we printed both off uh, one using Eligu's um, own version of Cura which we'll discuss at the end of this video and the CR6 was just using the standard edition of Cura both set up for 
using the, the stock settings for each printer. So uh, let's have a look now under the microscope what these two benches look like and then we'll, uh, we'll discuss the findings. Okay, here's some uh, close-ups under the microscope. This is the Eligu version of the um, Benchy. And a bit closer. This one with the yellow bit on the bottom is the um, CR6. You can see there's a bit more stringing on that. The yellow bottom part, by the way, was the bit of yellow filament that was left in it before the white came through so uh, but yeah you can see a bit of stringing only a tiny bit nothing serious there don't forget this is super close up on the CR6 so if you look at the quality overall it's pretty good the layers are quite good but you can see here where I'm pointing with a ballpoint pen there's quite like a ridge in again it looks much worse on this picture than it does in real life but uh, that dips quite a bit in that ridge on the CR6 so uh, something uh, happened there you'll see it's nothing like as prominent on the one we printed on the, the Eligu and again a bit, bit of stringing inside there but a tiny tiny amount on the wheel and if we look at the uh, the one on the Eligu now you can see the layers are definitely blended into each other nicer and no stringing whatsoever to the left and right of that square bit at the back and it just looks like a nicer print very very close though there's hardly anything in it again around the top of that arch is a bit nicer and although you can see the line there is nothing like as deep you can't really feel that with your the tip of your finger like you can on the one on the CR6. But a bit of stringing inside them front port holes. But yeah, you can see the shadow there where I'm pointing, but like I say, nothing like as, as deep as on the uh, the other one on the CR6. See it a bit clearer in this shot here along the front. That's the CR6 one, and this is the uh, the Eligu one. So definitely not not as deep a groove for some reason. So uh, yeah, both very very nice prints, and uh, I can't complain about anything the CR6 has ever done. And I've only done a couple so far on the uh, Neptune, but I'm really pleased. But uh, out of the two, I would say the Neptune was slightly better but uh, that may not be the printer it may be something in the setup in in cura or whatever and uh, like i say it was done in under the same conditions with the same filament um i don't know what caused that bit of a, a ridge but again to the naked eye you can hardly see it so there's no no layer separation or over or under extruding as far as i can uh, work out but uh, yeah either prints i'm sure you'd be uh, uh pleased with but uh if anything, I'd just give it a nidge to the uh, to the Eligu. So uh, yeah, now we'll the only thing we haven't discussed yet is the price of the two machines. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I got um, my uh, Neptune for, and like I said, that's the reason I made the video. Uh, I mentioned it all in part one, but it is absolutely fantastic value for money. So uh, I'll show you that now where I got it from, and I'll show you the price of the currently of the uh, CR6 on Amazon, and then we'll do a final uh, pros and cons on each one and a conclusion and finish off. Okay, so I've just brought this up. I've not gone on to any particular site, but uh, just looking at the prices of the Creality CR6 SE now. This top left one here, Technology Outlet, £269. That's about the cheapest one I can see. Um, there's one here from India, 270 plus 50, that's postage. 347 quid for that from Amazon. And uh, where are we? Yeah, technology outlet there, the same one, 267. Even AliExpress are 350 quid. And it took forever to arrive from there. So you can see that all 270 is the cheapest sort of price, most of them in the 300s and that's for the uh, the CR6 
So let's have a look now at the Neptune. Okay, if we go on uh, Elegoo's website and select printers, um, Neptune 3D printers, and this is the one I'm reviewing here. As you can see, they do a Neptune 3 Plus, which is bigger, uh, slightly bigger than this. The one I'm reviewing is the Pro. They do a, uh, a really huge one, a Max somewhere. Uh, I'll show you, I'll let you explore this, but uh, there's an X, and I think there's one called a Max, which is really, really big. And uh, so this is the one I'm reviewing. We'll click on there, and we can see it's on, it was on sale, at normally 300. It's now at 230. If we click on UK and buy it now, you will see it's out of stock. Now, when I first wanted one about three weeks ago, three weeks, four weeks ago, it was out of stock then as well, and I kept checking back. Um, pretty regularly and uh, about four or five days ago I saw it was back in stock so that's when I ordered so they obviously come in and out of stock um, quite often probably don't keep much UK stock on hand so it's worth checking regularly um, if it is out of stock but uh, yeah it's uh, there is all, all the details and if we have a look at my receipt now uh, i'll show you how much it cost me i got it for ten dollars less so yeah there's my receipt 230 minus 10 you get your minus 10 if you sort of join their website and agree to have free updates and that uh, you may be able to just copy and paste that code that discount code on shown on there so uh, do uh, whatever you please but that brings it down to 220 uh, thank you, George. It says, yes, George is my first name. Thomas is my second name. So $220. And uh, let's see what that actually cost me in pounds. You can see here from my uh, credit card bill that in dollars was £182 plus £5.3p three p for an exchange conversion charge. So the entire printer, including the delivery, which I'll talk about at any second, was 187. So yeah, yeah, make your mind up about that price, but uh, I don't think it can be beat. So uh, there you have it. Um, both prices compared. What was it? 187 I paid for this and at least 267 for the... Uh, CR6, that's the cheapest we saw it, and uh, in 300s on Amazon. Now, the service I got from Eligu was fantastic. In the past, I've emailed Creality for advice on firmware and advice on the problem that I was still getting in that. And they take a while to answer. They usually do answer, but uh, it's not much use usually, the replies. They usually refer you to some sort of online video they've made or whatever. Um... I've only um, been in contact with Elegoo a couple of times, but each time I got an almost instant, well, the day after response via email, uh, I asked them if I would be paying uh, import duty or not, and they said no, and uh, some other question. So, and I've heard on other websites and YouTube videos that they are pretty good in uh, customer care. So uh, we'll see about that in the future, but so far, good impressions. The order was fantastic. I was thinking it, it might have come from America because it said USA stock or something. Um, I ordered it on, uh, I think it was a Monday. I received it on a Wednesday. It was two days coming from ordering and paying to arriving. No import duty. It must have been UK stock. So no import duty or anything like that. It arrived by DPD, who are my favourite couriers. And uh, track, track it all the way. And uh, yeah, absolutely amazing service. Two, two days only, direct from the manufacturers, 187 quid for all those features. Now, at the beginning of part one, I listed on the side all, all the features. And, uh, but I've, I've described them all in this. They've both got auto-leveling, which is fantastic. I wouldn't have a printer now without auto-leveling. They've both got 
a co small compact size. If you're wanting a big printer to print huge objects like full-size masks and tune, um, body armor for cosplay, that this isn't for you. But it's still amazing what size objects you can uh, print with it. I mean, up here on my shelf, this skull, no problem whatsoever. This, one of my nice, I mean, the biggest thing I've ever printed, but it was in parts. The uh, Liberator spaceship from Blake Seven absolutely love that so you can print some br pretty big objects and quite tall figures on a platform that size like i say which is ideal for me um the cr6 like i say from stock is extremely noisy if you want a quiet printer you're going to have to update it with the uh, upgrade it with better fans not sure fans which involves a fair bit of work printing new uh, support units legs to raise it up because it they hang down further and you've got to get clearance for the fans the bed i didn't really rate the glass bed i had to fit that uh, by that as an extra so comparing stock by stock the elegu neptune is way way better in my opinion the other great thing is it's got pretty good software built in on the screen the stock reality wasn't that good um, I did a full video about upgrading the firmware to what you call a community firmware on the CR6, which was a much nicer interface, loads of extra features. Again, done another video on that. Uh, I'll put a card if I can up there. Check back on doing that. Uh, uh, well worth uh, doing if you've got a CR6. Once you've done all these, you've got a pretty good printer. And I'm pleased with mine, apart from the, the aforementioned fault with it not working until i've warmed it up with a hairdryer in a cold room uh other than that fantastic and i am keeping it but like i said the neptune is just a fantastic printer straight out of the box quiet and everything dual gear driver um one thing i forgot to show you they say a dual gear printer like the the neptune and one where it's a direct drive the the extruder is on the head is better at the flexible filament than a printer like the cr6 which uses a, a single uh, drive sprocket extruder via a bowden tube to the head um, they say that sometimes that can't ha handle tpu but i did have a go with the cr6 and i must say i didn't find any problem with it uh, i printed these shoelaces these are you took them in your eyes and as you can see the bend and i also even tried it on a vase now a vase is not what you would uh, use tpu to print i did do another couple of items a, a tire for a model glider and something else i've forgotten about and they came out fine even on the, the stock cr6 but when i tried the vase i mean i didn't expect it to be that good obviously there's all these faults here but when you think it's printing something that high and when it's getting up to here, there's bound to be a bit of flex in it. So it's never going to be. But I was quite pleased. So it shows that the CR7, I've not tried that. I'm not going to uh, try that. But I will be using TPU again. But but uh, don't be discouraged by uh, having just a, a single drive extruder and it, it not being on the head. It being via a Bowden tube. Um, if people say you can't print TPU, well... That proves that you can so i'm hoping for even better from the neptune one of the other great things is like i said their version of cura which comes with it on on the the sd card they include a version of cura which is the most popular slicing software which you'll need from downloaded files from thingiverse you then run them through this slicer which prepares them for the printer put it on an sd card and then you print from that now, Elegoo's version of Cura has something in its code. I, I fully explain it and go through it all in part one, if you want to look at that. But it has something which displays the little picture of whatever you're printing on the screen. You can see there, the actual object that we are printing is displayed. So that is quite handy. That is not a feature of the CR6, hasn't got that. Um, better things about the CR6, um, I prefer a sideways mounted spool holder. But that's just me, that takes up more desk space left and right. But I prefer it than the height, because I was, I was struggling for height. 
the uh, Neptune as it on the top. Um, other than that, I'm struggling to think of anything better. The SD card on the CR6 is a full size SD card, which is a bit easier to handle than the micro one they use on the Neptune. I don't know why they can't just put it on a USB socket. I mean, most people use a USB stick now to, to save files. It's much easier to hold, particularly the micro one. You, there's no need for a micro or SD card on a machine this size. Micro SD cards are for things like GoPros and stuff where you, you're trying to save space. There's no need for saving space on this. So uh, come on, all you 3D manufacturers. Let's have just a normal USB input on the front. But uh, other than that, I'm... Uh, I am struggling to find anything better about the CL6 than the Neptune. So, uh, yeah, basically that concludes this video. If you're thinking of getting one, uh, how long they'll be on this sale, if it is a true sale, or if they're always going to be like, I don't know, $230 instead of $300. But even at $300, converted into uh, British pounds, I'll put it on screen here, but what, it's going to be about 250 something like that. It's still a much, much better buy than the CR6. So uh, that's my recommendations. Hope you found this of interest to, to compare between the two. If you want full details on how to use the uh, the Neptune, check out part one. And uh, I hope to meet you for some other review on something else in the future. I'm sure there'll be loads of things come up during me, uh, me ownership of this. There'll be some extra things to print, maybe even some quieting kits further down the line that I'll consider fitting so uh, stay tuned uh, to this channel if you want to see some of them if you haven't subscribed please do so by clicking the little picture here of the shed on the left click the bell icon below and you'll be informed of any future uploads um, I've got loads more coming thanks for watching this one bye for now